Greetings, YouTube model train people. This video, I've got three Atlas Alco diesels. Um, these were all undecorated originally. I have custom painted and decorated them for my freelance branch line called the Mitchell Blue Lake and Aberdeen Railroad. Um, this is the paint scheme. It's like a metallic dark gray and Closer look here. It's got the three color stripe and the herald there on the on the cab. Yeah, so these are both RS elevens. This is an RS three. These were completely undecorated and unassembled. I had to add on all of these like grab irons, paint up everything. It was just gray when I got it and put it all together, which tell you what, gave me a whole new appreciation for buying these things already decorated right out of the box. So this is where I got the decals from. I designed up the Herald and stuff myself and then basically you send them off a PDF or an EPS file and it took about it was about a week turnaround before I got the results back and I'm really happy with the way they turned out. So here is the decal sheet as it was delivered. I'm happy with the quality. There's a little bit of pixelation, but it's really not that bad. Okay, I'll show you my technique for doing the decals on here. So I'm using the micro scale products here and just a brush and a little bit of water. So I will take the decal, which I've already cut to size, and just kind of get it wet here. Let it set for a second. And so I'll take the first micro set. So I'll take the micro set here and just kind of Put a coating, I've washed this already ahead of time with soap and water, so you might, just to make sure there's no oil or anything on here. Just kind of put a coating if you can. It kind of beads up, so you just want to get it a little bit under there so you can slide it around once it gets on there. Once the decal's on there. Okay, so now I'll take this and it should be ready to slide off the paper and get it. In position here. Ah. Okay, so I'll take some more Microsol and use this to kind of get it, get it lined up perfect here.
Okay, now that that's done, Now that's kind of done, I'll use this to soften it up and make it sit on the detail a little better. You probably, if you're on a perfectly smooth surface, you probably can skip this step. So what I do is I just coat that, put a fairly thin coat on, and let it soak for a couple of minutes. Okay, so now that it's softened up a little bit, I'll take, this is a fairly stiff brush, and I'll just kind of come in here and work out the wrinkles, and drying off the brush every now and then, and then kind of like, I've got this at an angle to the light, or I'm looking at it at an angle to the light, so I can really see the decal, the, um, the details here as I uh, get that pressed down in. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I'm I'm getting it. Um, to kind of set down around where there's like these hinges. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really like uh, tucking in nice around these hinges here on the door. You can see this line like this as it, these creases here, like right here as it goes up through.
Yeah. Here's the other side. You can see how it's dried. And now I actually find these smaller ones more difficult than the larger. So let's give it a try here. Okay, so here I have the Herald going to just give it a quick dip in water, not too much, and let it set, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 seconds. Meanwhile, we'll go back to the micro set. Put a little blob right there. This will help slide it around, get it in perfect position. Hindsight, I probably could have made those heralds a little bit larger, but yeah, it is what it is. This one, I'm not going to use any micro saw on it because it's such a flat surface. I don't think it needs it. Yeah, now I'll let that dry and should be good to go. Okay, time to get started on the decoder. So this is what I'll be using. Digitrax 165A0. It goes like this with the components down. I know that seems a little unintuitive, but I, that's the way it's designed to work. So, yeah, like that. So, so to remove the light board, we need to pull off these black clips. And then the board itself is held on there by these. And it's free. I won't be reusing these light bulbs, but um, actually I don't think you could with this because this has built-in um, current, uh, current limiting for the lights. Uh, and that's another thing I almost forgot about. Um, since I'll be using light bulbs and not LEDs, I need to cut a trace right here. Okay, so the red wire goes on this side and the black wire on this side. So while I have things kind of apart, I'm gonna take this chance to pull these weights off with these two screws here. And as I suspected, there's absolutely no grease in these gears. So I'll be using this type of grease here. And I'm just going to get a little bit. You don't need too much, but you want you want some. And just kind of goop that down in there. And it should eventually work its way throughout the gearbox. These are brand new units and I seems like they've never been lubricated, so it's a good idea to do that. Okay, I'm not going to use these black clips. I don't think they make a very good connection, so I'll be just soldering each wire where it goes.
Okay, so I took it to the test track to confirm everything works correctly and to confirm that if you put the red wire on this side and the black wire on this side, this, the long hood, will be the normal direction of travel. If you want it to be the other way around with the short hood being the normal direction of travel, switch these two wires around. Um, you can change that in the CVs as well. I just find it's easier to get it right the first time. All right, here's the ditch light set up. Um, you can tell those are actually on. There. They're on either side as well. Hold on. So for the ditch lights, I used the Details West DL229. And here is what they look like somewhat assembled. Um, Basically, I painted them first, and then I used a little pre-wired surface mount LED. I've never done this with the LEDs before. I've always used an incandescent bulb, but I definitely like it better with the surface mount because um, the LED sticks, or I'm sorry, the incandescent bulb sticks out quite a ways in the back, and you've got to drill a hole for that too, and it leaks quite a bit of light out. Um, on these, I, they still did leak light out the back, so I used black putty there, if you can see, um, around the back, too. The black doesn't show up very well, but yeah, I used like black putty to keep the light from leaking out. And then as far as the pilot goes, I had to drill two holes. There was almost... There was only basically one place that this would work. So I drilled a hole right here for the mounting leg and then right here for the wires to go through. And then on the underside, I just kind of like, and on the underside, I just ran the wires and super glued them right to the bottom of the walkway. This particular um, model, there's like, see how there's these offsets here? So it doesn't fit flush down onto the chassis or I would have had to grind out enough plastic so these wires wouldn't stick up. On Athern and um, Lifelike models, you have to go in there and cut away some of the plastic so the wire, otherwise the wire will um, we'll hold this up and it won't sit down all the way. So, yeah, good on Atlas for making this stand off by a little bit. Okay, now that I've got the ditch lights mounted on either end, I will go ahead and install the lenses on them. Probably could have done that first, but I'm not sure that it makes any difference. Okay, now I'm gonna put the walkway Now I'm gonna put the walkway back on the chassis now this does matter which way it goes So I marked it short and long hood I would recommend doing that when you take it apart because it can be a little confusing at first to get to get it the right way Because it almost fits the other way, but not quite All right, so the floorboards are held on by the coupler boxes, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and put those on next. Okay, let me zoom in here a little bit and I'll show you my plan. My plan is to run these wires kind of 
like that. Okay, so I've got the wiring sorted for the ditch lights. Basically the wires run up from the front here on either side. I use some black putty to hold it here. Then I've got a 3000 ohm resistor right here. Um, I had to experiment with a few different things and that was that looked pretty good for brightness. And then um, the cathode negative side comes up here to pad number four. The anodes come to here. That's the blue wire that goes to this pad right here. It's back here if you can see it. This is going to be a pretty big junction here with lots of Lots of different commons are going to be coming into here, so this is going to be a big junction. And it's basically the same for the front. Both sets of wires come up through here, three comb resistor on the cathode side, and then the cathode side from this side comes here to pad number three, and then the anodes come here to the blue wire. So that is pretty much it for the, that's pretty much it for the ditch lights. Okay, so the next up I will be adding classification lights like these. As if you can tell here, this is the factory. They're just, it's just a molded on part that um, isn't clear. So I'll be drilling out that, installing uh, these lenses from Details Associates, and behind that I'll be putting in these red surface mount LEDs. Okay, so to get started, I need to drill out the existing. So for that, I will be using Vice, and this is a number 62 drill. Now I find it very difficult to drill perfectly in the center here where I want to, so I will be using a smaller drill than needed, and then I'll make the hole larger when I'm done. So to get started here. A lot of times it helps to get started use an exacto blade So I got that drilled through. Now I'm going to go in with the X-Acto blade and just kind of center it up a little bit better. Now, so to remove the little lenses off the spruce here, um, you don't want to just like go like that and cut it off because it might go flying. So I put my finger nail underneath it like that and then cut it. <laughs> Even then it tried to take off on me. Then to mount it in place I'll take a tiny amount of glue in the hole And then I'm going to use a micro brush, dampened a little bit, to pick it up. And set it in place. Thank you. 
as such. And now just repeat that three more times. So I have the lenses mounted here. Now the next job, and this is a job, is to get the LED mounted up into here. So these ones that I have, the wires are the same color, but one of them is longer than the other one. That's the anode. I like to test these first just to make sure they work because you never know with eBay stuff. Yeah, this is a lot more red than it's showing up on the camera. Okay, so it's so much fun to try and get that mounted up in there. One thing I have discovered though, is if you take some isopropyl alcohol and like scrub the inside of this a little bit where you're gonna try and glue it, it makes the super glue stick a lot better. I don't know why that is. Yeah, but if you kind of look on the end of the Q-tip there, there's some kind of oil or something that's in these things that um, keeps the glue from sticking very well. So this helps. It's still not a lot of fun trying to glue these up in here. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to really show this on camera. I'll try to get it the best I can, but it's somewhat difficult to do. All right, so I have the LEDs mounted up in here. The best I, advice I can give is be patient. It's super frustrating trying to get these in there glued in place, but um, tweezers and a small screwdriver to hold it in when the super glue dries tends to be the best bet I've found. And then if you can see down in here, I have taken some black paint, painted over the whole thing so light doesn't leak out. Here, I'll show you the... You can see on the other one where that hasn't been painted, red light is gonna leak out and it'll shine through on the... Oh, sorry. It'll shine through under the number boards, which I don't want, so thus the black paint. Okay, now on to the number boards. So this... This is what the factory piece looks like. Um, I'll be doing the headlights separate, so I'm basically just going to cut each of these two side number boards off and use them individually. But first I'm going to glue some surface mount LEDs onto the back of this. Okay, so I have glued two surface mount LEDs to each behind each of the number boards here. Um, and now I am going to remove these. I'm not going to be using the center part because I'll be using different headlight bulbs. So I need, I'm just going to cut it right here to remove these. And now I just need to fit these up into the shell. To finish up the number boards, I have these, um, I already made up. As part of the decals, I have these numbers. And hopefully they ended up being the right size. Yeah. Pretty close. So let's get those on.
Okay, here's the final result. All right, now onto the headlights. For those, I will be using this part by Minitronics, these little bulbs. And here's what they look like. They're the perfect right size to fit in. Yeah, they actually fit a little bit loose. So what I like to do to fit these in, I'm gonna take a AA battery and test these just to make sure they work before I go to all the effort of, yep. I've never had one of these bulbs not work, but I mean, the day I find one that doesn't work, it'll be after I get it. Yeah, the day one of these bulbs doesn't work for me will be the day that I already have it mounted into the shell. So. What I'm going to do, since these are going to be put in series, I'm going to cut one wire a little short. It's just easier to do this before it's in the shell. You can feed them from the inside as well. I just find it a little easier to do it this way. And these are kind of loose fitting on some, I think like Atherin and Life, like they fit so tight you don't need to glue or anything. I'm going to use just a tiny amount of glue to um, to hold those in place. All right, if you can see down in here, I've got both the light bulbs mounted up in place. And I took black putty to fill around it so the light doesn't leak. And then the two bulbs are in series and I will be connecting those to, I'll be connecting those to the headlight outputs here and here and here and here for the back and because I'll be using a lamp instead of an LED I'll be cutting this trace right here I've, um, I've actually already got that done yeah you might I would suggest doing that before you mount this into the into the chassis yeah it'll if um, you forget to do this the light bulbs will be extremely dim you'll barely be able to see it glowing if you look very closely there it's in the directions down here it talks about it next up on the lighting we have the rotary beacon here's what it all entails it's a little circuit board there are only two wires you have to connect um, red is the common black goes to the function you want to use So I will, this is the end that's going to be mounted on the roof. Now what I'm going to be doing is I will unsolder each of these wires off of the board here and end up running it through a hole on the shell here and a hole in the... Uh, the top of the cab. All right, so here, zoom in a little bit. I have, I have, I use this, oops, use the magnifying glass here so I could see a little better. And I've disconnected each of the little wires off of here, run them through the shell, through the cab, and then to here. Or actually, I did it the other way. I ran them this way, through this, through there, and then soldered it back on onto this. And now I've got it hooked up to a 9-volt battery, just checking that it still works. Okay, for the final mounting of the rotary beacon, I'm going to take a little bit of black paint and hit this wire, this copper looking wire coming out the bottom here. Just so it's not so obvious. Like that. I'm gonna get a little super glue on each of the feet here. We go well here they are in action on the track 
Check out all the lighting effects. Do kind of a little zoom around. Well, I am very happy with how this turned out. It's been about a month in the making and gotta say it was totally worth it. Pretty much exactly how I had it planned other than originally I was gonna have the, um, the stripe come all the way around each end here, but uh, I don't know. I probably could have pulled it off, but I just, yeah, I don't know. I think it's fine the way it is. So Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.